Hi everybody, we will now discuss losses of histories, knowledge and heritage as part of the Threats to Heritage module. We will expand on the videos you've watched previously with new material and some interesting cases. We know cultural heritage emergencies were actually the catalysts for the UNESCO World Heritage Convention. It was born out of the destruction of heritage during the Second World War, as well as disasters and floods in Florence and the Nubian Valley in Egypt. However, illegal trafficking is still a large threat to cultural heritage. You may now know that in order for such conventions to be effective, they have to be implemented into national law. To be fully effective, these laws need to be expanded and more importantly, better implemented. For example, how can specialist national and international police divisions help? Equally, we have little evidence for cases of human rights laws being applied, including the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples by host nations, nationally and internationally. Heritage is still under threat by dams, still even in Nubia. The planned Saudi-funded Chinese-implemented dams will lead to the disappearance of 70% of Nubian heritage. Indeed, development has a lot to answer for. New construction often promises benefits in cases involving national and transnational interests. Some might argue that many, in many parts of the world, development and industrialization have cleared justly some material heritage for the benefit of economic development. But this is debatable, and there is also unplanned development in places with weak governance and infrastructure. So, how do we deal with natural and rapid or slow environmental degradation? Most of the archaeological sites, as well as intangible and natural heritage, suffer from environmental changes and disasters. Floods, tsunamis, earthquakes and hurricanes are part of the threats to heritage. Also, complex emergencies occur when poverty and inequality lead to the lack of capacity and neglect. For example, Ikram's Apanatondon had led rescue work and capacity building in the face of the Haitian emergency a few years ago. Ms. Tondon has pointed out the significance of preparedness in the face of nation national disasters. Another example comes from post-conflict Somaliland. Aggressive trees like cactus are now making many parts of the country uninhabitable. For example, the town of Bonn is completely covered by cactus. This town hosts one very important archaeological site, namely Abasa, which was one of the biggest towns in the Odal Kingdom. Another partly man-made environmental problem that impacts the natural and cultural heritage is the burning of trees for charcoal in places like Somalia. Many of the trees here are for shelter, medicine and food for people and animals. Due to prolonged droughts, however, nomads are in a vicious cycle to preserve for the long term or to exhaust for the short gain. Lukut, a Neolithic site of mixed natural and cultural landscape near Hargeisa, is potentially important for tourism. It has lithic industries and rock art. Yet, people are cutting the trees in the site and it impacts the site's class in the long term. Its landscape would probably no longer be identified as mixed cultural and natural landscape. People are digging holes to burn the trees into charcoal. In doing so, they disturb the important archaeological stratigraphy. The short-term gain of selling charcoal for the international trade is undermining long-term sustainable environmental and tourism possibilities. Of course, Somaliland is not the only case of natural habitat loss to aggressive trees 
or short-sighted approach to environment. This is happening in other parts of the world too. Furthermore, some sites are destroyed for political reasons. There are also sites that are neglected and hidden for political reasons, as we noted in module two. There is also something called difficult heritage that is rarely talked about around the world. One example of a hidden history is the genocide of the 20th century that still remain to be memorialized. One example is the genocide of the Herero by the Second Reich of early 20th century Germany. However, Germany is also one of the few countries of former colonial powers to actually acknowledge its past atrocities. In Germany, uniquely, you will find monuments of national shame. On the other hand, Great Britain, for example, has not been forthcoming with an acknowledgement of the not so sunny side of its history, as pointed out by Neil McGregor, the former director of the British Museum. Not only are former colonial powers still dealing with the legacies of that time, but also it's difficult for the current nation states, which were former colonies, to negotiate their heritage from colonial times. As we noted in the last module, the 1970 convention only recognizes nation states. Dr. Jos van Burden argues that a lot of decolonization in this matter has not yet taken place. This contestation of poten is, has a potential damage on heritage. However, there are some successful diplomatic negotiations which have taken place and set precedents for positive and mutually beneficial solutions. Now, watch the expert interviews and proceed to the case study. Oh, and if you like playing video games, we have something special for you.